Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. So my name is Lisa Maroon, if you uh, haven't heard already, and I'm going to talk about nutrition and fitness and how it relates to the influence parents have on their children. So this could apply to young mothers and fathers who have young children, it could apply to middle age, older. Uh, really, you can take it to heart to your own life, maybe apply it to your grandkids, um, however you choose to. So really, it's just about thinking uh, where you are in terms of the example you, uh, you give to your surroundings. What example are you? Uh, no matter what age, we're examples to our children. Uh, you have young children, you might have older children, but they're always observing their parents. You're always their example, no matter what age uh, you become or what age they become. Uh, how, many, how many people here have children who still count on them? You know, most people do. And we're gonna jump right into like overeating, uh, something that really affects the majority of people. We don't realize why we overeat or why we eat too much. If that's a struggle for you, it's something to consider. Are you hungry, which you should be when you eat? Are you anxious? Are you lonely, uh, tired, or bored? How many people here, just by a show of hands, uh, eat when they're bored? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's normal, it's normal. But if it's something that's happening all the time and then you're saying, you know, well, I can never lose weight or I just don't feel good, my joints hurt, it's something to consider. You wanna be mindful of what you're eating. Um, and how many eat when they're stressed? Okay, how many don't eat when they're stressed? So, I mean, that, that's how I am. If I'm stressed, I have to remind myself to eat. So it's normal, but you have to be aware. So the key here is, I'm gonna use the word mindful more often, but to just be aware of your body. How am I feeling? Am I anxious right now? Okay, step away from the food and focus on what really needs to, maybe you need to pray. Maybe you need to call somebody. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. But you do need to be aware of how you're feeling. And temptations, you know, this is, a big epidemic now, especially for children. Uh, but what is tempting us to eat and, and have, be surrounded by so much junk food? It's really the environment. Everywhere you go, you're surrounded by desserts and, and fried foods and, and advertisements and um, uh, you know the people around you. So everyone's going to do what they want to do, like Father Chris was saying. Uh, you know, you might be surrounded by people who you, you have questions about, but just focus on yourself and take care of yourself. Do you. Uh, so, you know, for example, you go into the um, grocery aisle and you see how many breads and how many cereals and how many choices of foods to pick from. It's overwhelming. But becoming educated on what you really need and just go in and out and stick to it is a big deal. Uh, so recommendations, I uh, would just say really adjust your home environment. Uh, it all comes down to your home, where you live, what you're consuming, and what you choose to do. You can't, you can't um, control what's going on in the real world, what's going on at your schools, but like anything in life, you can control what you do. So if this is an issue for you and you want to be more vigilant about what you're eating, what your children are eating, what your grandchildren are eating, what your own parents might be eating, then just really make sure that you're controlling what's at home because that's where you have the most control. Uh, I always like to say try if you do cook or don't cook, just plan out three meals for the week so that you feel prepared and you can work your, your week around your schedules and your meal times and you just know, okay, Wednesday we have that, we have leftovers on Thursday and you kind of just pace it out. You feel more in control and you know what you're eating that way. Otherwise, and I do this too, but what do we do if we're not prepared? We'll grab carry out, we'll grab something fast, which tends to be saltier, fattier, tastier, but maybe it's not good for our health. Maybe it's not good for our blood pressure. Maybe it's not. So it's just something to keep in mind. How often are we doing that? I always recommend to pack your own snacks and lunches if you can. Um, otherwise, same thing. You know, if you don't have an apple to lean on, you're gonna grab a bag of chips because when you're starving, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, and then save your willpower for the times when you're in the wrong position. So, I mean, if you're at home, don't put yourself in that position where you have to um, beat yourself up. You know, you shouldn't do that in your own home. Um, you just expect that if you go to a party, you go to an event, they're going to have variety of foods and enjoy it, indulge. But if you're eating that every day, then, you know, it's something to question. But if you know, like, all week I'm eating the things I should be, I'm going to splurge on Saturday, I'm going to splurge on Sunday, then you'll feel like, you know, there's a balance. It's all about balance. And then sleep is really important. Look at this cute baby. Um, adorable, right? Uh, sleep is so important. Sometimes I sleep too late, and then the days I sleep late, my kids wake up for something. They, they're cold, I have to go pee pee. Some, it's always like that, right? But um, <laughs> sleeping is, it creates a vicious cycle if you don't sleep. Because if you don't sleep, then you know, you're irritable the next day, or maybe you feel um, just, you're just anxious. You don't want to deal with anything because you're tired. You have a list of reasons why. So what are you going to do? You don't want to cook. You don't want to pull out the, the stove, you know, utensils and all this stuff. The last thing you want to do is grab something convenient. So think about your sleep cycle and how it affects the rest of your week. Easier said than done, but we're talking about, you know, some goals we could strive for. Uh, and then just Right now, you could brainstorm in your own mind. What are some things you could benefit from in your household? Just you and your family. Is it cooking? Do you need to improve on cooking? Uh, do you want to incorporate family meals more? That's really hard sometimes with young kids and their schedules and their dads come home late and, and it's hard to have family meals. Um, is it eating breakfast, late night snacking that you need to improve on, being more aware of your stress level? Or is it lack of activity? So we're going to kind of talk about that. So family meals, of course, are so comforting. Uh, comforting. Um, you know, you think about holidays, especially when you're with like a big group of family, and and how it how it, it feels so good to just sit down and be with your family. Um, that's always something to strive for if you can with your you know your immediate family too. And then children, they really, you know, we don't realize it until we grow up, but. All those things counted when you were young, you know. That time when your parents sat with you, that time when your grandparents put you on their lap and told you a story, all these things really do, like, shape the, the child. So um, we're talking about how you influence kids. Well, children like that predictability. Um, and then, of course, um, incorporating regular meals into your schedule will help your children they tend to eat more fruits and vegetables that way, less likely to snack on unhealthy foods, and less likely to smoke and do drugs and alcohol. So, I mean, I think it just comes down to, you know, knowing that you have that foundation, that you have that family, that support, and the simplest things, like having meals on a regular basis, just shapes your children. And then I would obviously recommend to stock up on the healthy stuff. So I, I try to have this uh, picture Pictures are easier to grasp than um, words. So color five times a day. That means add colors to everything you're eating. I mean, basically look at your plate at every single meal and every single snack and ask yourself, is there a color? My daughter Adriana is here and she knows this all the time, yep. Mm -hmm. Is there a color? Is there fruits? Is there vegetables? Because if not, then you're probably just eating like chips and bread and maybe some chicken. But you want to obviously, I'm not going to talk about the benefits because we all know the benefits, but it's just a reminder. So it's a fun way to just think of five. Um, you want to stock up on easy snacks to grab for your family. That's for not just children, I mean all of us. You know, if you know you have a full day or you have a full schedule or you're going to work, um, make sure you stock up, you go grocery shopping, and you have things that are accessible. Uh, lean protein. You know, we all know the benefits of encouraging lean proteins, uh, choosing whole grains. So really, like, basically look at the fiber list on the labels, and you would ideally want three grams or more of fiber if you can. And then here, limit fat intake. Uh, this is a um, air fryer toaster oven. It's like a long word. I have to think about how to say it. So I recently got one, and I really like it because... You think of a fryer, I don't fry foods, but you think of a fryer as being greasy, but it's a, it's a really hot 
small compact oven that crisps your food so you think it's fried and it feels fried and maybe you'll put like a little olive oil spray so you need a little bit of oil at times but the result is really quite fascinating everything's you know very crunchy and it's really appealing to the person if you're eating and it cooks so fast so we've burnt a couple things and my daughter's always like nah don't burn it but the idea is it cooks fast so I mean I it's perfect for you know when you have limited time and you want to cook something, um, it's great. If you have any questions about that, we can talk about it later. Um, limit sugary drinks, limit fast food, and low nutrient snacks. Now, if you notice, I said limit and I didn't say avoid. I mean, you don't want to deprive the whole world and everybody, you know, that's not realistic. That's not even how I live. But you don't want to drink this every day. So I don't buy pop. I don't leave it in my house. But if we go to a restaurant, we go to a birthday, it's perfect. You have a balance that way. Um, and you go to, you know, we don't eat fast food all the time, but sometimes we pick it up. So it's really the idea of, of balancing things. Um, oh, I think my label's off of this one. It's supposed to say breakfast, but um, these are some breakfast ideas because obviously that's important. Uh, you know, you want to, sometimes it's hard. I, I do it sometimes myself, but you don't have the right breakfast and you want to start your day and, if you don't eat right, then it really does affect you. So sometimes planning things out is really convenient. So overnight oats is something you can make the night before and it takes like three minutes. So you can just make it, put it in the fridge and it'll be ready to go. Um, you know, picking high fiber foods and these egg, little egg muffins you can make and, and put them in the fridge and they'll last you for four or five days. So those are delicious, you just nuke them up and you have like substance, you have good food to start your day and you feel good about it. But of course it takes some planning. Um, I picked really easy boards for these photos, but I wanted to show you that anybody could make these. Uh, if your children or grandchildren or your parents or your spouse, whatever, whoever it is, um, if they come to the counter and they see this, then how enticing is that? Oh, hummus cucumbers, they'll, still eat, they'll start eating it, and before you know it, it's gone. So do that more often for yourselves. Just pull out everything, throw it on the counter, wash it, chop it. You can even leave it in the container for weeks. But it's so much more appealing, and this is really simple. I mean, we're talking about fruits and vegetables, but you just kind of combine it all. Uh, and then this is the most important, but being a role model. So I really like this quote. Your children will follow your example, not your advice. Now, we can tell them so many times about things and our parents told us, but if you're not doing it yourself, then they're not going to take you seriously. But when they see you uh, exercising and making an effort to eat breakfast and, and you know, all these great things, then, then they'll do it. So keep that in mind. Um, of course, eating more fruits and vegetables, not overindulging on a regular basis. And I wanted to make that known because we might overindulge, but you don't want to do that on a regular basis. Uh, discuss portion sizes with your families and show them, you know, ideally half of your plate should be colorful and then a little protein, a little starch. And then discussing the feelings of fullness. So it does take your brain 20 minutes to realize you're full. So funny story, my sister Tina and I, uh, thank you for being here. We went out to lunch the other day and we, we had a decent amount of food. But at the end, we both looked at each other and we're like, we're not really that full. And she said the same thing. But we didn't order more food. And then by the time I got in the car, I felt fine. So it takes your brain 20 minutes to realize it's full. And if you're going to like famish you know in the first 20 minutes and you're gonna probably overeat so take it slow and just know that it's okay like you don't have to feel absolutely stuffed that's not the way to go uh, and then you know for picky eaters and such don't cause a big battle uh, what I would recommend is give like children especially control to pick what they want but you limit their availability so you're choosing what fun snacks they can have, what desserts and such, but you know like kind of where it stands and you tell them to, okay, you want control, you can pick what you want, but you know what's there. It's, it's the same with tantrums. Okay, you want to put your shoes on, what shoes do you want, the blue or the red, but you're still getting their shoes on. Mm -hmm. um, and then teach them about feelings of fullness, establish a predictable schedule of mealtimes and snacks. Um, 
Don't force your kids to clean their plates. So this is like, this is dependent on how much food is on their plate. So if you go to a restaurant, you know, you don't want to teach them to like eat the whole plate because most likely the portions are much bigger. Mm -hmm. But at home, I plate their meals and I'm like, you better finish everything on your plate. But it's different at home, you know? So it depends where you're at. But in general, like our culture, um, you know, encourages, you know, eat everything. And if you don't eat your food, you're wasting it. No, not really anymore. Things have changed. And if you don't eat it all, maybe put it in the fridge. Like we'll eat it later. Um, you don't have to throw it away necessarily, but it is a good lesson to put a little at a time and always add. And then it talks about bribing. You know, you don't want to bribe kids with desserts, although I'm guilty of doing that sometimes with my little one. Um, whatever we can do to get them to eat sometimes. But, you know, you could think of other things. Like, you know, if they're picky eaters, maybe uh, think of an activity you can do together. Uh, you know, something other than bribing with food. And then, don't use food as a way of showing love, you know, hug and kiss and love and praise each other. So um, that's my little boy. Uh, involve your children, you know, get them, get their hands dirty, let them see what things are like. They grow up appreciating where the meal came from, the efforts you put into it as a parent, and they'll enjoy it. They might have a new desire for, for or appreciation for the food. Um, and I would encourage, take them grocery shopping and let them maybe choose a few recipes ahead of time and then they have to find the ingredients. You're, you're teaching them all about this whole process that they have coming in their lives ahead of them. Um, and then teach them about label reading as best as you know. Um, this will really help prepare them for their future and the decisions they make in their life. Um, again, I would encourage when you're looking at ingredients on a food label, ideally you want five, six. I mean, if you see ones that have 20, uh, you should question it, right? Uh, and then limit crap foods. So crap is um, an abbreviation for, or an acronym for, oops, calorie rich and processed. So it sounds like crap, right? You can say, don't eat that crap, but it's really what it is, is calorie rich and processed, so you wanna limit those things. Um, beverage calories, you know, my kids love pop. Like if we ever go to like BurgerFi and they have the pop machines and it's, it's all you can drink, I mean, it's like, a, it's like they've never had it, but they do, I give it to them. But you know, the, the idea is they're not drinking that every day, so I let them. Um, limit what's in your house. Calorie density, pick more water-based foods, I mean, if you think about like what you're eating, is it, does it have more water in it? Does it have, is it a sandwich that has layers of sprouts and lettuce and tomato and cucumber and pickles, or does it just have cheese? So you want more water-based things in your meals. Essentially adding color to everything you eat. That's my motto. Uh, sodium density, you know, limit what's, how much sodium is in your food and then reduce junk during the week. Um, you know, it depends on the age. Again, I have, three kids under the age of 10. So they do, they have chips, they have this, but I pick chips that have, that were made with olive oil or sunflower oil. Like I'm selective with my foods, but they still are eating a wide variety of, of fun foods too. And then some shopping tips, shop with your ongoing list and meal ideas for the week. Who here keeps like a grocery list, ongoing grocery list? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, so that's really important. Like whenever you're out of toilet paper, you write it on your list and you keep it on hand. Um, there's so many great apps, too. If you use your phone, you just always have it on you. But uh, it helps you. So if you think of a recipe or you think of an idea and you're out in the store, you're not scrambling every day figuring out what to do, but you have, you have a plan. Um, and then just some ideas about what you probably already know. But sales don't always mean it's the cheapest. You know, only buy what you need and what you can afford. Three for one is only a good deal if you're going to use all three, you know common sense, but sometimes people are, you know, gullible and they'll end up buying things, they don't use them. But for food, you know, if you're going to use it, stock up when there's, when there's a sale, freeze berries, it's perfect to freeze things. Um, and then set a reminder to check your freezer. Cause how many people have tons of stuff in their freezer and they're like, ah, oh, it kind of looks old and, you know, freezer burn and I don't know if I want to use it. But 
if you put a reminder every week, say, okay, what can I pull out this week? And I'll, I'll make something small to go with it. And you kind of, you're using and replenishing what you have, but you have to do this stuff. Otherwise you're wasting. Uh, so now we're going to move on to fitness a little bit. So keep moving. Um, I really push, um, so there's an acronym called NEAT. So that stands for non-exercise activity time. So parking further in the parking lot. So you're just constantly moving when you're not even planning on exercising. It's not, that's not your exercise activity. This is just bonus, extra. Um, you know, take the stairs when you can. You know, just walk around the mall with a friend. If, you're, if your knees hurt, if your feet hurt, do whatever you can to keep moving. Um, and there's some ideas here of things you can do with your kids. There's, there's a fun game called Just Dance. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's on the Nintendo. Yeah, so it's a Nintendo game, and maybe uh, you know about Just Dance. Do you know about Just Dance? Do you know that game? No. So it's a fun game. They have these like images of people with fun music, and they're dancing, and you have to like mimic them. But it's like a workout at the end. So it's, it's fun. You dance with your kids. You dance with your grandkids. Oh, they'd get a... A kick out of it if they saw like anybody dancing with them um, and then maybe get active for a cause find a real good cause that you're benefiting and then it, you feel good about it like and even if you're walking just do something that's different set some goals for yourself uh, maybe your family children are in sports um, oh I left that in my bag Adriana can you go check my black bag over there there's a that toy from five below you'll see it so exercise studies have shown they, that exercise, get this, literally stops your brain from shrinking. So, I mean, this is miraculous, right? Like who wouldn't want to keep moving? And this is really more cardio, like trying to, you know, really get it in your heart rate up, whether it's on a machine, running, not everyone runs, uh, jogging or just really fast walking, but you have to, you have to just, it's not like lifting, lifting up like, you know, five or 10 minutes of exercise. You have to actually get your heart rate up. But this is a picture of my family and I, um, we were hiking in, um, in the mountains. And that wasn't always my ideal way of vacationing, but sometimes we do that. Oh, thank you, honey. That's not the, always the ideal way, but um, it was so liberating to like just get fit and spend part of your day like being active and exploring the beauty in the world. So finding ways to incorporate exercise is so important, but this study they were talking about is not just for middle-aged people. Even in your elderly uh, age, it benefits your brain from, from being, from exer exercise benefits your brain, even in your older age. So you know, obviously starting younger is better. So you want to encourage your kids, your grandkids, and yourself, and your parents, and all the different age groups. Um, check yourself. We all have, you know, I know everyone's going to lift up their chest now. But uh, this, is, this is a, you know, a, a problem that's probably going to worsen. I mean, I know people who are young who are having neck problems and spine problems, and, and uh, it's terrible. I mean, these people are not even, you know, ad full adults yet. But children are on the computers and iPads. I know. It's like we're going we're gonna to be so upset just from these pictures. But the truth is uh, it's happening to all ages, children, middle age, people at work. So remind yourself. I'm big on reminders. I mean, put, a, put an alarm on your phone. Don't we put alarms for important things like doctor appointments? Just put it once, once a day. Well, you, you might get sick of it, but throw it, throw it off with the time so you're not always depending on it. But it'll just be a check. Like, check yourself. Lift your chin back. Try to bring your phone up to your eyes. If you're using an iPad or, or any type of device, lift it up to your eyes so that you're, you know, you're not like slouched down and, and looking at it like that. And then... Um, Eating mindfully, I think this is really important for um, this particular group because we can incorporate our spiritual part of it too, but being mindful of how you, how you feel and how you're enjoying your meal is very important. You want to live in the moment and you want to be able to, to really like soak up that moment and not just think about what's 
coming or what happened because so many of us do that and I do too sometimes. So I'm really trying to like just focus on what I'm eating, close your eyes, feel the taste, feel the texture and enjoy it, swallow it, breathe and just really be mindful of what you're doing at the moment. So many of us are busy and rushing and sometimes I eat standing up and lately I'm like, okay, I'm standing, I don't wanna sit down because why are we, you know, why aren't we enjoying like even five or 10 minutes? So how many people stand sometimes when they're rushing and they're eating and standing? You yeah, so you deserve to sit and enjoy your meal and not hurry, multitask. Um, this is a girlfriend and I cooking, cook and eat in a good mood, I mean, if you can. Um, soft, relaxing music when you're eating, it makes such a difference. I don't do it enough, but I, I need to. Sometimes we have kids' music on, so we, <laughs> I need to change that to soft, relaxing music. But sitting at a table, I think, is really big for people. Uh, and then eat your favorite food last. Some people eat it first, some people eat it last, but you just savor that last bite. And then of course, respect your body and health. Uh, and then this is a vision board. I have a friend, uh, her name's Mita, and she has her own, <clears throat> her own page, and it's uh, her own uh, logo called Naturally Nourished with Mita. And so she created uh, this uh, vision board through the Wish Board app. Um, but basically it's a collage of images and pictures and affirmations of like your desires and your goals and what inspires you or motivates you. So I thought it was really cool and I thought we'd share it because if you make something like this, basically a collage and just leave it somewhere in your home, it reminds you of what are you striving? Are you trying to be healthier? Uh, you know, she has um, turmeric and fruits and vegetables and her husband and her kids and and basically a balance of like activity and, and you're balancing your life all together. So I would really encourage um, creating something like this because the whole point of this lecture series is to walk away and have a few things that you could say, I'm gonna try that, or wow, I, that really stuck with me. So think about what you can grasp from this presentation. Um, maybe you wanna incorporate more vegetables each week. Um, Maybe you want to add two more vegetables a day because that's more realistic. So smart goals are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Um, maybe you'll want to you know, switch to healthier oils. Maybe you want to switch to limiting junk food during the week only. You know? so, so think about that and actually write it down because that's where it counts. And then um, if anyone would like a grocery store tour, or advice with how to buy the right foods, I can take you grocery shopping and I can take you on a tour if you're interested. So let me know if you'd like that service. Uh, and then I have a Facebook page that I'm always posting just different tips and ideas. So if you're interested in those, you can follow me there. And uh, just a last reminder that parents set the foundation. Thank you so much.